Welcome to MedSurge Mini number 13, Multi-Drug Resistant Organism Infectious Disorders. The infectious process has to include a pathogen. The pathogen is transmitted either through a reservoir or a host, and then it is finds their person that they're going to infect. In order to infect them, they have to have a portal of entry. This portal of entry can be through things like breathing. Um, it can be through any opening in the body, such as your rectum, your urethra, or through any breakdown in the skin, such as wounds, cuts, things like that. It can also enter through our eye, our ears, and our mouth. Then the individual has to have an impaired immune response once that pathogen has entered the body and then infection occurs. When we have someone that has an infectious disease in the hospital, we would put them on different types of precautions based on the type of transmission. Contact precaution is done through touch, so we would typically wear gloves and a gown. Droplet precautions are transmitted through droplets in the air, so they would typically need some form of a mask, goggles, gown, and gloves. And an airborne pathogen is transmitted just through the air. This is the most easy to catch because it has such a high form of transmission. So typically we would see specialized masks like N95 or a caper. We would also have our gloves, our gown, our goggles, face shields, anything that we need. Multi-drug resistant organisms are typically um, causes of nosocomial infections. Nosocomial infections are hospital acquired infections. And Examples of multi-drug resistant organisms are MRSA, BRE, C. diff, and carbapenem resistant enterobacteriaceae. Common interventions for multi-drug resistant organisms is doing frequent hand hygiene, placing our patients on contact isolation, providing them with different medications, probiotics, IV fluids, encourage movement, do proper wound care, and symptom management of any complications, especially related to breathing disorders where we may need to provide oxygen or chest physiotherapy. When we look at medications, one of the main things that can be complicated is these organisms are multi-drug resistant, meaning that it's built immunity to multiple treatments, and that's why they become so infectious and difficult to treat. To start off, we have methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, or MRSA. This is, can be nosocomial or community acquired. And basically it's a disorder that's resistant to any beta-lactam antibiotics. So that's all of our penicillins and cephalosporins. Typically we do have MRSA in our body as normal flora, and it's commonly present in the nose, throat, axillae, perineum, and on the skin but when it relocates to other parts of the body, then it can become infectious and it can be hard to treat. Reasons the why it may relocate is through improper infection control measures, overuse of antibiotics, or improper wound care. The risk of developing MRSA includes, or individuals that are at higher risk for developing MRSA are those that are hospitalized, have soft tissue infections, are in long-term care facilities, have undergone invasive procedures, have medical devices, hemodialysis therapy, a weakened immune system, or IV drug use. Characteristics of MRSA in particular is that it's aerobic gram-positive non-sporulating coagulase-positive bacterium that coagulases to prevent phagocytosis of its cells in reaction to the um, different antibiotics. The pathophysiology is because it has that inability to be phagocytized, it makes the virus very virulent. It can also destroy active components of penicillin and it prevents medications from binding to the bacteria for discussion or destruction. Symptoms of a MRSA infection would include a skin infection, such as pimples, abscesses, size, and impedigo. And it can also lead to complications such as pneumonia, soft tissue infection, surgical site infections, blood infections, and death. Treatment of MRSA is first and foremost prevention. We can also use antibiotics such as vancomycin, linozloid, daptomycin, tigracycline, and clindamycin, and sulfamethazolotrimethoprom. 
We can also surgically remove any infected material with MRSA. And if it forms some form of an abscess, we can drain that abscess. We would also wanna treat any complications of MRSA. Next, we have vancomycin resistant enterococci or VRE. This particular um, pathogen is resistant to vancomycin. It's normal flora that's found in the gastrointestinal tract as well as the female genitalia. It can also be found in soil, water, and food. As colonization in human can be anywhere from one week to three years. It is less virulent than MRSA, but the risk factors for developing VRE are the same as those associated with MRSA. We do know as well that antibiotic use can increase viral load of VRE, so it can be very difficult to treat. Symptoms of VRE includes fever, back pain, red and warmth at wound sites, purulent drainage at those wound sites, tachycardia, hypotension, and fever. Complications is that it can lead to UTIs, peritonitis, and bacteremia. Treatment for VRE is first and foremost prevention and to treat any complications. We can use penicillin or amoxicillin, as well as aminoglycosides, QPD, LZD, daptomycin, tigacycline, tetracycline, telvacin, um, and a couple of other different medications. Then we have clostrodiditis difficile or C. diff. This is resistant to aminoglycosides, linosomycin, tetracyclines, erythromycin, clindamycin, penicillin, cephalosporins, and fluoroquinolones. So it is resistant to many, 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 many medications. This is a spore forming gram positive anaerobic bacillus, and it's the most common cause of antibiotic associated diarrhea. The risk for developing C. diff is antimicrobial treatment, age greater than 64, immunocompromised system, um, those who have NG tubes or feeding tubes, those who have recently had GI surgery or are taking acid suppressing medications. The pathophysiology for how it enter, or, um, causes infection is the spores enter the body. They become resistant to disinfectants, heat, and dryness. They're often present on our body surface, and then they enter the host through um, you know, any of those hosts, GI surgery, feeding tubes, NG tubes, any of that. Once it's in the host, it produces enterotoxin, which is toxins A and toxins B. Toxin A activates master, macrophages and mast cells, which activates an immune response, and toxin B releases leukocytes and cytokines. It's diagnosed through a stool sample. The symptoms is to have a very distinctive yellow, smelly diarrhea, as well as any of the other symptoms associated with complications. So the complications are increased moral, mortality, hypovolemia, low blood pressure, renal insufficiency, electrolyte imbalances, GI complications, skin breakdown, sepsis, and death. Treatment is use of antibiotics like vancomycin, fitamoxacin, and flagyl. We can also do colon surgery to remove the parts of the colon that are infected by C. diff. We can provide them with Zinflava, FMT, probiotics, and if they're having frequent diarrhea that's causing skin breakdown and increasing the risk of other infection, we can put in Reflexaseal, which is something that collects the diarrhea through a tube and into a bag and prevents that stool from getting um, on the patient's skin. Then we have a Cenotobacter balmini. Um, this is a multi-drug resistant organism that's resistant to beta-lactam antibiotics, quinolones, and aminoglycosides. It is an aerobic, gram-negative, cacobacillus, and non-fermentative um, pathogen. It's often found in humans on the skin, throat, rectum, or respiratory tract, as well as in the water, soil, and on animals. Risk factors are recent surgery, having a central venous catheter, a tracheostomy, a ventilator, or enteral feedings. The pathophysiology is that the outer membrane becomes impermeable and that an activates the antimicrobial enzymes. Symptoms are often seen with those that are associated with respiratory tract infections, sepsis, wound infections, UTIs, 
DNS changes and eye changes. Complications is that it can increase morbidity and mortality as well as a ventilator associated pneumonia and sepsis. Our treatment would be prevention, use of beta-lactam antibiotics, minocycline, and occasionally we may see carbamenopins prescribed, but this is controversial because it's starting to grow resistance to that as well. Then we have carbapenem resistant enterobacteriaceae or CRE. These are medications that are resistant to carbapenem antibiotics. Risk in development is similar to all the other MDROs. Additional risk factors would include being an older adult, having a longer hospitalization, being a woman, and having an indwelling device such as a Foley catheter or a central line. Common comorbidities that we see with CRE includes diabetes, heart disease, and renal disease. The pathophysiology is that this bacteria spreads from the intestines to other parts of the body. It can often be through stool exposure or exposed wounds. And then it's resistant to carbapenem through activation of the B lactamase enzymes, which results in B lactam antibiotics um, and production of carbapenems that break down carbapenem antibiotics. Symptoms are dependent on where the site of infection is, but some systemic symptoms may be fever and chills. Complications is that it can lead to sepsis and high mortality. And treatment would be ceftazamide, meropenem, plasomycin, and polymyxin antibiotics blend. So it would be a combination of those different antibiotics. And that concludes our discussion on CRE.